morning. Welcome to our reflection for the day. Our reading for the day is John chapter 4, verses 1 to 26, which seems long, but it would be difficult to shorten it without missing something out. So here goes. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptising more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptised but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the pl plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did all his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to walk, draw water. He told her, Go and call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on the mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshippers must worship in Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. And this is the word of the Lord. This Samaritan woman wasn't your usual conventional type. She wasn't the one that could lose herself in the crowd. Jesus could see into her heart and saw that she had difficulties with relationships. That's why he mentions that she has had five husbands. Presumably each one of them found her too difficult to live with. She goes to the well in the middle of the day instead of with the other women in the cool of the early morning. And she's opinionated. Nobody likes an argumentative person. But despite this, Jesus warms to her and engages her in conversation. Ac across the racial divide, across the gender divide, allowing him to answer him back, even though he is God incarnate. This could have been the first time that she had been taken seriously, listened to with both ears. 
This is certainly the first time she has had a theological discussion with the Messiah. We all know people like this, people that don't quite fit in with unconventional lifestyles, with opinions that cut across the norm, people that we sort of skirt around so that we don't get trapped in the corner being harangued by them. I remember one chap, quite a long time ago now, that used to come to church who was like that. At that time I used to work night duty on a Saturday night and would come to church on Sunday morning before going home to bed. This particular Sunday he started a vehement conversation which I had to cut short as I really did need to go home to sleep. And then half an hour later, after I'd got home, he was on the phone to continue where he left off. To my shame, I was too exhausted to listen and I put the phone down on him. I've often wondered what it would have happened if I'd treated him with more compassion, if I had treated him as Jesus would have done. With this woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, Jesus gave his whole attention to her, teaching, inspiring, but also seriously listening. The disciples were astonished to find them deep in conversation, totally outside the norm. But they were also so in awe of Jesus that they didn't dare make a comment. And that conversation, that engagement with Jesus, inspired the woman to go back into the town and announce to the neighbours and cat townsfolk, those that had despised her, announce to them that the Messiah was there sitting at the ancient well. And she was so filled with the assurance that Jesus had given her that they all followed her back to Jesus to hear for themselves. No longer the odd woman who didn't know how to behave. Now she was the apostle to the Samaritans to go down in history as one of the major female figures of the Gospels. How about us? When we encounter people who are difficult or unusual, do we pay attention to them, listening and explaining and taking them seriously? like Jesus did? Or do we quietly put the phone down on them, as I did? I know which I want to be now and how I regret the other. Can we finish with a prayer? Father, Lord God, thank you for listening to us even when we ramble on and don't make sense. Thank you that you have the, we have the example of Jesus to follow, learning by his life how to encourage and uplift those around us. Help us to reach out to those who are alone and distant and draw them into your family. Amen. Bye for now. Have a good day and God bless.